Hello, my beautiful bookish people. In this video, I am going to talk about my March reading wrap-up, aka my Femathon wrap-up, which I will leave a link to a playlist in case you are interested in catching up on that material. First off, if you want to know all of my thoughts on all of the books I read in March, I'm going to leave a link down to the blog post that I wrote about it if you want to go through that fairly quickly. Or again, there's the Femathon playlist where I blogged pretty much every book that I read in March. But because I read Oh gosh, was it 28 books? I, I read a, almost a book a day in March. It's too much to try to talk about every single one of them in this video. So after we go over some stats, I'm going to give you my top three. One for middle grade, one for YA, and one for adult. Also, if you would rather read the statistics that go along with this video, that's uh, also in my blog post, so feel free to check that out. I want to note that any category I've marked as unknown is because I could not find clear information to indicate the answers would be in any other category that I currently have. Also note that on gender identity, I identify all women as women and all men are men cis or trans, they are counted under the gender they identify as. Non-binary authors would be listed under non-binary, and unknown in this instance means that I could not find the preferred pronouns, which probably means the author blurbs were written in first person. Co-authored books can be written by more than one person. This does not necessarily mean that I have taken the gender of the people into account. I just know that there's more than one person that's worked on the book. I also want to note that I just realized that I haven't been marking my books that showcase mental health to the point of it being a disability. I, for some reason, haven't been putting them in the multiple category, just under the mental health category, and I probably need to fix that. And if books contain multiple forms of diversity, as listed under the individual categories that I have, they will be listed under multiple and are not broken out into the individual categories. Like in this instance, I, for example, I read a lot of queer or LGBTQIA plus books, but those often contain other categories as well and are listed under multiple. So now let's get into the numbers. I will, did remember correctly, I read a total of 28 books in March, 27 of which counted towards the Femathon prompts, which totaled up to 9,194 pages as estimated by the page counts found on Goodreads. Two of them were ARCs, four were audiobooks, eight were ebooks, and 14 were physical books. For intended audience, none of them were children's books, five were middle grade, six were YA, and 17 were adult. As for authors by race, I have identified four by black authors, four by Asian authors, one by a Hispanic author, two as mixed race authors, two as unknown, meaning I could not find that information, and 15 were white authors. And all of those percents are up here somewhere where I have edited them in. As for authors by gender identity, we have three male authors, 17 female authors, no non-binary this month, and three co-authored and five unknown. For books by diversity of their content, we have 11 that fit into my multiple category, zero under just disability, zero under just queer, four under mental health, and like I said earlier, these probably should have been under multiple as well. I need to work on that. 
three under racial and four under fey diversity and six under none, meaning that they didn't fit into any of the categories that I just listed. As for books by genre, I have read two contemporary, one paranormal, one sci-fi, two thriller, seven manga, and two under other, meaning that they did not fall under any of the other categories on this table. Again, I'm not the best with my spreadsheets, so maybe I need to do some work on this if people have suggestions of how to do this. And like in the other categories where I have the multiple category, if you can select multiple and that just be a display thing. I haven't really looked up how to use Google Sheets that well yet. I'm still just now learning the formulas that I'm currently using. So if people have suggestions, please do let me know. I just had to empty my SD card because I didn't pay attention to how full it was getting. Now, where were we? <laughs> and here are my books by rating. As you can see, I had one book that I just really did not care for. And a few that were, you know, pretty okay, pretty solid, I guess. And then overall, I had a pretty good reading month, I'd say. So let me talk to you about my favorites that I read this month. For middle grade, I'm gonna say that my favorite book and or books, because they were all by the same author, though not necessarily part of the same series, it does benefit you to read them in order if you don't already know some Slavic folklore. And those would be The House with Chicken Legs, The Girl Who Speaks Bear, and The Castle of Tangled Magic, all by Sophie Anderson. Out of those three, I would say that my most favorite is probably The Girl Who Speaks Bear, just because I really, I identified with the found family aspect because if you've been watching my channel for a while you know that I am absolutely a sucker for the found family trope and also just the way that so many of the things were handled I just really appreciated the take that Sophie Anderson had on those topics and I really wish I had annotated those books as I read them because last month I just started getting into annotating my books, even though that's just me taking a little sticky flag and putting it there. It's progress and I kind of like it. So that's a fun new skill I picked up towards the end of March. Anyways, if you haven't already heard me talk about The House with Chicken Legs, that is where I would recommend you start with these books by Sophie Anderson, and I made a whole video about why I liked it so much. So go ahead and feel free to check out that spoiler-free review. For YA, my favorite of the month goes to Legendborn by Tracy Dion. I picked up this copy because, well, for one, it was going around booktube and a lot of people were raving about it, and I kind of wanted to get in on that to see if it was just the popular thing at the time or if it was something that I would also really enjoy. And then I had a friend in my life directly reach out to me and go, have you read Legend Board by Tracy Dion yet? Because it's great. So of course I had to pick this book up and I am so, so glad that I did because it is absolutely fabulous. So for some reason, if you have missed out on Anybody else talking about Legendborn? Let me read you the book blurb for a hot second. After her mother dies in an accident, 16-year-old Bree Matthews wants nothing to do with her family memories or childhood home. A residential program for bright high schoolers at UNC Chapel Hill seems like the perfect escape until Bree witnesses a magical attack her very first night on campus a flying demon feeding on human energies. 
a secret society of so-called legend-born students who hunt the creatures down, and a mysterious teenage mage who calls himself a Merlin and who attempts and fails to wipe Bree's memories of everything she saw. The mage's failure reveals Bree's own unique magic and a buried memory with a hidden connection. The night her mother died, another Merlin was at the hospital. Now that Bree knows there's more to her mother's death than what's on the police report, she'll do whatever it takes to find out the truth, even if that means infiltrating the Legendborn as one of their initiates. She recruits Nick, a self-exiled legendborn with his own grudge against the group, and their reluctant partnership pulls them deeper into the society's secrets and closer to each other. But when the legendborn reveals themselves as the descendants of King Arthur's knights and explain that a magical war is coming, Bree has to decide how far she'll go for the truth and whether she should use her magic to take the society down or join the fight. And that is a fabulous book blurb. That is exactly what to expect out of this book. I just, I cannot say enough good things on this book and how stuff is handled. Green are quotes that I like to remember. Orange are all of the things that made me giggle or I could really relate to. Blue is sad moments, whether that be me looking at that and going, ooh, that's sad, or something really sad for the characters. Pink is love, whether that be familial love, an actual like love story interrelationship type of deal, or just being really, really passionate about something. And Normally, I would have yellow tabs for anything that's problematic, but as you can see, I didn't really mark anything as being problematic because anything that is problematic in this book is immediately talked about right afterwards as to why it is problematic. And I absolutely love when books do this and don't just expect you to know why it's problematic or allude to it being problematic. They're just like, no, let me shut that down right away and tell you why. So I just, this might be my number one YA fantasy book of the year. I don't know how anything's going to top this unless the sequel to this also comes out this year, which I have no idea if that's a thing that's going to happen, but if it is, I am going to pre-order that so, so quickly as soon as I find out about it. So if you're looking for YA Arthurian retelling with a really good twist, totally pick this book up. And for my adult favorite of the month, this also goes to fantasy and it goes to Elantris by Brandon Sanderson. This is a mostly character-driven book until the very end where all of the plot points come together and it had me physically whooping, like literally going yes at like 3 a.m. when I was reading this so it was more of a yes because um, my partner was asleep in bed next to me and I didn't want to wake them but I could not contain myself when everything finally came together because it felt so rewarding because of the character development that happened way earlier on in the story. I want to say that Elantris is Brandon Sanderson's first published book. Don't necessarily quote me on that, but if it's not his first, it's one of the first. So I was really interested to see how I would like it. And this is also the first book in a series which still hasn't been written, but I think Sanderson has said that he's planning on releasing book two either later this year in 2021 or sometime in 2022. And knowing Sanderson and how fast he chucks out books, I would not be surprised if we get that coming down the pipeline very soon. <laughs> While this is the first book in a series and the ending has been left somewhat 
open-ended so that you can go on in the series. It feels pretty good as just a standalone as well. Like the way things wrap up at the end of this book, I don't feel like I've been left with a huge cliffhanger, but it is open-ended enough for me to be really interested to see what happens next in this world. So let me give you some context of what this world is by reading you the blurb. Elantris, gigantic, beautiful, radiant, filled with powerful individuals who use their magical abilities to benefit all the people of Aralon. Yet each of these godlike beings was once an ordinary person until touched by the mysterious transforming power of the Shaud. Shaud? Shaud? I don't remember how to pronounce this word. Then, ten years ago, without warning, the magic failed. Elantrians became wizened, feeble, leper-like creatures, and Elantris itself dark, filthy, and crumbling. The Shaud became a curse. Erlon's new capital city, Kay, crouches in the shadow of Elantris, which its people do their best to ignore. Princess Sereni of Teod has come to Kay for a marriage of state with Crown Prince Raiden, hoping also to find love. Sereni learns instead that Raiden has died and she is considered his widow. Both Teod and Erlon are under threat from the imperial ambitions of Fjordel, a city filled with ruthless religious fanatics, and whose high priest, Hrathen, intends to convert Erlon and claim it for his emperor and his god. Now Sereni alone stands in his way. But neither Sereni nor Hrathen suspect the truth about Prince Raiden's disappearance, Taken by the same strange malady that felled the gods of Elantris, Raiden was secretly imprisoned within the Dark City. His struggle to create a society for the wretches trapped there begins a series of events that will bring hope to Erlon and reveal the secret of Elantris itself. And yes, that is a perfectly descriptive book blurb that tells you what to expect in this book, other than... I mean, I guess it kind of hits all of the plot points pretty hard, or at least most of them and warns you of the plot points that are coming, but the majority of this book is character development, and I really, really appreciate the female representation that this book puts out. I already did a whole rant on that in my Femathon reaction to this book, so just watch that video for me to talk and gush about that. For forever, but for now, I think this is a good place to leave off my March wrap up. So, there you have it. If you've made it to this point in the video, tell me what your favorite read in March was, or if you don't have the spoons for that, or just want to add an emoji, leave me a star or the word star in the comments below. And I will see you in the next video. Bye!